Um, I am a, a spectator. I'm a worshiper. So I'm I'm not pastor. Uh, I came to I came to play the. I came to play the music a little bit. Uh, so Chris has agreed to uh, step in for me today. So I didn't have the hours and hours and hours and hours of prep time, and it gave me a yeah, block. Yes, it gave me a break. <laughs> so thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. You know, this started out several weeks ago when I opened my big mouth as usual and make a comment to someone about how much I miss teaching. I was junior high Sunday school for 17 years. Oops. <laughs> Honestly, it's a privilege. It, it, it really is a privilege to come up here. Sometimes I wish it wasn't quite so privileged as in being right here. Um, but it is a privilege. And it's an honor to be given this opportunity. And as Pastor noted, the study that goes into it, which has led to an interesting adventure getting to this lesson. As you can see on the screen right now, rightly divided. It didn't start out there. I had this idea shortly after he said, hey, can you? Yeah, okay. And I went into this, and the study, there's always input from other places. And I mentioned something to him about what I was going at, and he says, well, what about this? And it's like, that ain't going to fit. <laughs> Rightly divided. So that's how I came up with this. He actually influenced my I travel into this message. And rightly dividing, what it really is, is it's Bible study. It's studying God's Word. And a big problem that we face studying God's Word is the big question is how? How do we study? And one of our big things that we do is people say it's too confusing. How do I make sense of it? So their first step is, you know, the, the first thing they said, well, just open your Bible and read. So growing up in and, uh, and out of church, I heard a phrase once, it was called Bible bingo. Now, Bible bingo is when you take the Bible and you open it up and you just let it fall open and you point to a verse. And right now it's like Matthew 27, 5. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. This ain't good. Hmm. Really it's like, okay, okay. God, maybe this ain't working. Maybe I need another shot. So we're going to hit with Bible bingo again. John 13, 27. Now after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, what you do, do quickly. This ain't getting any better. That's not how we study the Bible. Bible being really isn't an option. Because you don't know, there's no, no way to tell what direction you're going. So the next step we take, now we're going to get interactive. This is the wild card. Because what we do is we get amongst our friends, people we're with, and we start talking about the different passages of scripture in the Bible, the stories in the Bible, and we, we try to get a handle on what God's word has for us. So, here's the wild card. I want a volunteer to tell me any story, any account in the Bible that comes to their head right now. And there's silence. That's all today. Anybody? Do I get the pick? I'm going to pick on my favorite. I'm pretty sure I know what hers is going to be. Darling. Woman at the Woman at the well. Can anybody tell, anybody else tell me, I know it's her favorite, I know why, can anybody tell, anybody else tell me anything about the account of the woman at the well? Woman at the well is the Samaritan. 
What's that? She was a Samaritan. Yep. And okay. Jesus okay. was there, and he was not supposed to talk to a Samaritan. Yep. He was there a lower species, I shouldn't say that, a lower class of people. He was from. So she's there, and she needs water, and he says, there. She says, for her. She says, you need to give her something like that. Or what? She was trying to give her. That's what Anybody else? Any story? David and Goliath. David and Goliath. What do you know about David and Goliath? It was the battle that, uh, where he was thought of as uh, the smallest person there. He was held back and he went to help fight to that uh, he felt he needed to be part of everything. Anybody else tell me anything else about David and Goliath other than what he told Goliath died by a stone. Yep, there you go. There you go. Okay. I usually like to do things in threes. So do, can I get one more story? I see the slab. Uh. <laughs> Anybody? Noah. What? And then after he got swallowed and then spit out, he was all m flesh melting and all that. <laughs> Just, yeah. Okay, so, there we have three stories. And here's the problem with that kind of Bible study. What do those three stories have in common? What is, do they have anything in common that draws them together to give you a principle. Good versus evil. Thing. Good versus evil. Well, yeah, okay, that's very basic, but yeah, that, that, yeah, God that does work that way. God will be doors for each one to follow. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's good. Paths to go. When we study the Bible, what God wants us to do is learn from a small piece of his word, how he wants us to become what he has for us, to be what he wants us to be. In order to study the Bible, you have to study. We're going to go to 2 Timothy 2.15. Oh, it says 2.14 through 2.21. Because of the entire passage. And that reads, Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. And their message will spread like cancer. Hymenius and Philetus, Greek stuff, are of this sort, who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal: the Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Now, I want to focus on one word. We're in, or this version is in verse 15. In, in, in this version, it says, rightly divided. Now, if you look at the title page of Dan, look, you saw that there was rightly divided, and above it, right there it is, Above it, there's this one word. That is the Greek word for rightly divided. One word. And as I started looking at rightly dividing, and what I do, or what pastor does, anybody does who is going to teach or preach, 
You need to know what that word is to rightly divide this in order to present it to all. And this, this particular Greek word, I found that when I got into looking up the language, the original language, I found eight paths I could follow. And the first one, now I get to use the big words, is called exegesis. Now simply put, here it comes. <laughs> I saw the look. Is exegesis. Now exegesis simply put is who wrote it, who did they write it to, and why did they write it. It's basically simple history of the passage. This one, Paul wrote it to Timothy. Why did he write it to Timothy? Because he was telling Timothy how to do what we do up here. That's why he wrote it. That's the history. Then you got the second one. And that is, another big word, hermeneutics. Hermen what? <laughs> hermeneutics. And that, again, simply put that is the present. How do we take that from thousands of years ago and make it make sense for us right now? It's exegesis, hermeneutics, it's the then and there and bringing it to the here and now. Simply. Here's the catch. What it meant to the original author and receiver, it needs to mean the same thing to us. You can't change the meaning. It cannot change context, is what it boils down to. You can't make the Bible say what you want it to say if it's not going to say that. The present does not change the past. That's the third one. Here comes later. It's not third, is it? So, the present can't change the past. The past can change the present. And that's what God's Word is intended to do for us. To change how we behave, how we present, Everything about our lives is to change us. How does it do that? Number four. It cuts. How does it cut? It, I didn't do. I didn't do all the. the I'm terrible with, with, with uh, addresses, as I call it. But it says God's word is like a two-edged sword. It cuts sharper than any two-edged sword. It doesn't. Hack, it doesn't chop, it cuts. It doesn't tear you apart, it cuts, it slices. Number five, it's straight. Like I mentioned, it doesn't, when you, when you have a sharp instrument, I can point this at the, at the men, you shave, well, even the women actually now, because they, they shave their legs. Do you ever see a jagged cut when you cut yourself shaving? No, it's not. It's right straight through. It doesn't tear. It doesn't. It doesn't chop. It's like, whoops! It's there. It cuts. It's not jagged. When God makes, puts in His, when God put in His word a specific cut, that's. That's the line, the piece that he intended for us to use. There's no veering away from it. Otherwise, again, it's that context thing. We can't get away from context. Okay, do all these cuts. What do you do with them? So I'm six. You end up with a bunch of pieces. It's like dissecting. 
They all start, yeah, and you're, you're trying to put them together. That's where all the stories come in. And the, the stories will start piecing it together to, to give us direction, to, tell, to show us where God wants us to go. And when you're putting things together, as any good builder knows, there are standards that need to be met. Now, as I'm mentioning this, I want you to keep in mind, all these examples come from the eight points from that one word. As a builder, there's two things that you need to keep in mind. One, we all, pretty much, we, we see it all the time, and that is level. What happens if uh, you don't have a level surface? It's going to tip. A fine example of that came to my mind was the Leaning Tower of Pisa. I've seen lots of pictures of it, thought a couple times, well, oh, it's kind of cool to go and visit that. But then I got to looking at that and it's like, but I really want to climb up in that thing. When's it going to go over? I mean, it's tipped at a 30 some degree angle. And they say it's going to stay there? I don't know how much I'd trust that. <clears throat> what causes that? It's not, it's not the materials they used, it was the surface they were building it on. You know something? When God's building us, He's working with the same kind of surface. Are any of us really on a level playing field? I know I'm not. Just ask my wife. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> I looked at your wife. She answered me, too. <laughs> There's another aspect. And that is plumb. Now, Lady Tower agrees that that one kind of falls against this one, too. Because you know what plumb is? That's straight up and down. It's got to be straight up and down. I was wondering if that last piece was going to be. I'm going to take a little, little break here to thank Daniel for all the work he put into this, getting this to come together. Because I could have never done this on my own. I am, or shall we say, almost technically ignorant. We've got an awesome graphics guy back there. And I, I'm really going to, you know, blow his horn a little bit. That title page, I just gave you the word and the words. And that's what, what it came out as. Out of the park. Thanks, Dave. So, we do all this. Why? And like I said, it's because God wants to build us into something that he can use. Something that will promote and enhance and glorify and project all that God is capable of making. And there it is. That's what we have. We have a complete picture. What we've done through studying is we've taken a bunch of little pieces and by God's direction and His Word have used His guidelines to rightly divide. to find out the truth of what God wants us to become. And all those little pieces, when we, when we first stand back and look, you can see on the screen, it's, it's a picture, you see something. But when you truly start to meditate and consider what God's done, and God 
is going to do with you, what he wants to do with you. And I'm going to use myself as an example. What am I? What, why should I be right here? What gives us this privilege? Because I, me, I'm no different than any of you. What am I? And that's exactly why I wore what I wore today. I'm just a worker. I'm a laborer. But there was something in this, this passage of Scripture. Who was it written to? The workers. A workman that doesn't need to be ashamed. We're all just workers. God wants us all to be a part of that picture. Each and every one of us. What's to stop you? What's to stop any of us? Like I said at the beginning, it's a privilege. Sometimes the privilege ain't all it's cracked up because you've got to go into some pretty uncomfortable places. Yes, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy teaching junior high. <laughs> you wouldn't. I, te I teach junior high. Yeah. So I don't understand. It's the challenge. Yeah. It's stepping out of your comfort yeah. zone. But they challenge you all right. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. <laughs> and as, as our team leader in the, in the church that I served in used to say, God bless you. Because we all know the challenge of the junior high. But God gave me a burden for it. I think part of the reason God gave me that burden is because I never actually got past that point. Again, ask my wife. I said nothing. The books say it all. As we become part of that picture, you don't have to be up here. You can do it where you work. You're the workers. You're out there. One of the churches I attended, over top of the door, it's there was this little like bumper sticker. And as you walked out that door and you walked under <laughs> the bumper sticker set, you're now entering the mission field. When we step out that door, we become the workers in that picture. The workers in that picture, God wants to be full technicolor. So all pieces, as they come together, and form the picture that God wants for his church. What Christ wants for his bride is a beauty that can be displayed through us, through our character, through our actions, through everything that God can teach us, <laughs> wants to teach us, has left for us, has preserved for us in his work. We can become a part of his work. Full color. Beautiful. In his eyes. We have to learn to step past our fears. Step out of our comfort zone. Get a little sweaty. Get a little nervous. Trust me, it's beyond nervous up here. <laughs> we can't be afraid. We just gotta be willing. It's all good. Is it always gonna be easy? No. I know if you're anything like me when I'm at work and I feel that trip of the Holy Spirit. When, you, when something goes on at work and things are starting to get a little out of hand. And God, because of because if you're studying, if you're reading God's Word, accounts will come to mind that will relate to what you're going through. 
And as workers, as a member of the body of Christ, it's our responsibility at that point to become the teacher and the preacher. It's an everyday thing. And that's where stepping out of your comfort zone really hits home. Because at the workplace, in some families, I have, family, I have a, a portion of my family that if I were to stand up like I am right now, I'd be blacklisted. In fact, it was. It's not, it's not going to be easy. But God never said it was going to be easy. But we've got to do it. We need to step up as cross-culture and go out to that community and be what God wants us to be. At work. At home. At play. There's no boundaries. And that's what God wants us to do. But we got, when we do it, we have to be fully prepared. They work with it. It's not a shame of what they've been taught. The only way you can do that is to get into this. Rightly divide it. Study it. On your own, and even better yet, as we're trying to promote it up at the cafe, Vicki's starting the Bible study. There's another one in the works. Just started, but it's in the works. Want to get that teaching opportunity yet? <laughs> All it takes is a willingness to be. Hey, here we go. Be all you can be. Anyway. 
It's about you. It's about all that you've done for us. And Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us. And we praise you all the more for that. Thank you for giving us the opportunity, giving us your word, giving us all that you have. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name. Thank you.